There's an awful lot of things being discussed in the immediate aftermath of the Newcastle United takeover, but one of the most common ones I've seen is the mention of Newcastle United heroes and legends, Kevin Keegan and Alan Shearer. Now, Keegan and Shearer are two very different men and two very different players. However, they do have an awful lot in common too. Both, of course, are Newcastle United legends in their own right. Both understand the football club and its supporters like no other. And both of them, unfortunately, were treated disgracefully by Mike Ashley. Just thinking about how Ashley treated both of these amazing men still makes me angry to this day. Keegan, of course, was left with no choice but to quit the club in his second spell as manager after he was totally undermined by the very little but massively loathsome Dennis Wise, who was the director of football at the time. Laughably, Keegan was told to watch YouTube videos of prospects and basically found himself with absolutely no authority whatsoever. And of course, Keegan needs that if you want him to trust him with your club. Keegan ultimately took Ashley and the club to court, won £2 million in damages from Ashley, who was forced to admit in court to misleading the fans too. As for Shearer, recently retired from playing, he was tasked with the job of keeping Newcastle in the Premier League towards the end of the 2008-2009 season. He had just eight games to achieve that goal of survival, but obviously didn't manage to do it, something you can't really blame him for. After the season was over, it is widely known that Ashley had a conversation with Shearer and told him he was the man he wanted to stay in charge of the club and to try and gain promotion back out of the championship. Ashley never called Shearer again, not even to tell him that he'd had a change of plan. Add into that, Ashley made the awful and frankly petty decision to strip Shearer's name from Shearer's bar at the back of the Gallagher end and turn it into Nine Bar. Pathetic. And let's not forget the fact that Alan Shearer's statue that is housed on Barrack Road has nothing to do with Newcastle United, the football club, either. Our record goal scorer sits on council land, almost out of sight, and I dare say many, many visitors to the stadium will have missed him entirely. To put things bluntly, Ashley treated both of these club legends as if they were crap on the bottom of his shoe. The good news, however, is that the old regime is gone, and all of those tales of disrespect are gone too, although the painful memories will remain forever. And now we can start to think about how we can honour both men appropriately. It has been like a breath of fresh air listening to Stavely last week talk about how she couldn't understand why Shearer's statue was not on the premises and why there's a lack of anything to do with Kevin Keegan at all at St James's Park. And she is absolutely spot on. For me, Kevin Keegan has done more than anyone in my lifetime to raise the profile of the club. When Keegan took over in 1992, we were heading for the third division. Two years later, we finished third in the Premier League, playing the most exciting brand of football the league had ever seen. We were the original entertainers. A year later, our stadium had been developed beyond recognition and was, at the time, truly world-class. Just four years after saving us from, that, from a plight the Mackhams understand all too well, Keegan took us to within a whisker of the Premier League title. There was no failure there. What Keegan did in that first spell as manager remains one of the most extraordinary managerial jobs anyone has ever achieved in football. And no one will ever convince me otherwise. I was never fortunate enough to catch Keegan as a player. He was just before my time, but I know the story. He basically sacrificed his England career to come and play for Newcastle in Division 2 to help us get promoted to the top flight. The man is a legend of the club, so why is there no mention of his name around or in the ground? That needs to change, and I believe it will really, really quickly. I'm sure there'll be a statue made of Keegan and placed in an appropriate place around the ground somewhere, but I think the new owner will do more than that. And I think that when they inevitably expand the stadium, Keegan will be honoured with the naming of a stand. Say they expand the Gallagher end, it's always going to be the Gallagher, but, but officially it could become known as the Kevin Keegan stand. And out of the four stands, what better stand to name after Keegan, the man who understands the club better than anyone else, having his name adorn the end that means the most to Newcastle fans. And as for Shearer, well... He's already has his statue, however that thing really needs to be moved into a very prominent position outside the stadium, perhaps close to Bobby Robson and the bar which will surely be rechristened with his name again soon. I would love to see that. The new owners obviously bring a lot of money, talent and experience in running successful businesses, but the one thing the new owners don't really have is a true football connection, and they certainly don't have a true Newcastle United connection, which is why I believe Shearer and Keegan must be made official club ambassadors to help advise and to sell the club in the quest to reach the summit of English and European football. Two footballing giants with exceptional reputations working in an official capacity for the club that they love is just something that I would love to see. And it'd be a very easy, quick win for the new owners to set their stall out for how they wish to operate moving forwards. But I'd love to know what you think about how Alan Shearer and Kevin Keegan should be celebrated 
in and around St. James's Park. Let me know in the comments below your ideas. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button. That helps spread it to more people. And I'll see you really soon for another video.